I would like to thank you all for waiting patiently. Our live stream will begin soon. At this time, we are taking care of preliminaries, such as birthdays, anniversaries, and announcements. So now is a good time to let everyone know that if you have missed any of our services, they are all archived and available on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Over 100 hours worth of praise and worship and messages straight from the Word of God. Many revival services, homecomings, Easter services, and Christmas sings are available. Facebook is our main source where we stream live every Sunday. YouTube is great for watching many of our older streams. All videos are labeled under playlists, so if you're looking for a specific year or month, it's easy to find. And finally, if you are looking for a specific song or when the message begins, check under the description where everything is timestamped. We appreciate you choosing to watch our live streams and giving God the praise along with us. Thank you. All right, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Yes. Marlene, yes. I heard you over everybody. <laughs> I, I, I think you guys can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. All right. That's much better. Much, much better. All right, we're going to do in the praise and worship book today. This is uh, Linda's favorite song. I'm only singing it because I feel led to. Not because it's her favorite song. Oh, well, okay, well. All right, then we'll do another one. All right, then let's do 99. Our God is an awesome God. Yes, he is. He is an awesome God. We just got this last night. I just felt led to do this song. I ever get to it. I want to make sure I got the words right. Okay, here we go. Ninety-nine in the praise and worship book. Yes, he is an awesome God. 
He reigns, praise God, hallelujah. And he is awesome. And he is worthy. Worthy is the Lamb to be praised today, hallelujah. All right, we're going to do number four. Majesty. I always want to worship the Lord. In his majesty. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah.
kings and Lord of all lords. Anybody got a word of testimony for the Lord today? Praise God. We don't have the microphone back there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Every day that we know, we Thank are you. blessed. Yes, we are blessed. You know, he could have thrown us away a long time ago because we're so sinful. Yes. You know what? We overeat, and I know I did this past week. <laughs> and, you know, there's things that, just little things that he blesses us with mm -hmm. each day. Yes, he does. You know, he, he gave us children. A lot of women here have children. Mm -hmm. They're, I mean, every one of them, they're different, but we love them each. That's right. And we love them so much that, you know, that you just want to make everything all right for them. Yeah. And my heart goes out to Aaron. Mm -hmm. Aaron has been battling with, the, you know, with the leg for so many years. Mm -hmm. And then he broke that hip and they had to cut more of the leg off. Mm -hmm. And... That fake leg just hurts. Yeah. And every time he wears it, he gets a great big ulcer. Mm. But I, and I, just like I told God the other night, I said, God, mm -hmm. you can also restore Aaron's mind yes. to take away the worthlessness. Mm -hmm. But you could also give him a new leg if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Give him peace. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I said, it's in your hands. I know that there's going to be many miracles. I can't say God's going to honor me and give Aaron a new leg. But he could fix that prosthetic that Aaron could wear. Yes, thank you, Jesus. So that he could get up and do. Right, right. I mean, he can't see, and he's not really supposed to drive because mm -hmm. of the eyes. But mm -hmm. it's a, God can do anything. That's right. You're right, honey. I've seen many miracles throughout, you know, with my brother Raymond. Amen. From the day that he got hurt. Till the day that he ran that race and got to go to heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you. There was miracles. Amen. Mm -hmm. Many miracles. I would call Pastor. Pastor, I think this is Raymond's last day. He's dying. Mm -hmm. Do you know, as soon as she would get there, mm -hmm. that cat bird would light up like a, a Christmas tree. Oh, my Lord, he loved her so. Mm -hmm. Because you were there. Too. Yes. I mean, he'd be laying there, and I'm thinking, well, he's not going to make it till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It wasn't time. No, it wasn't no. time. But right. God didn't take him until I gave him to God. Mm -hmm. Because I had to release Raymond. Yes, yes. I had to Thank release him. Yep. And I just want to give God praise. Praise God. Yes. And I want whatever it is. Whatever desire is on God's heart for me to do, mm -hmm. I want my race to be able to be in that finish line. Amen. 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 And I have really, my heart breaks for the homeless. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do more and more for the homeless. Praise God. Amen. That's wonderful. Isaac has his, but Janet's going to have her own. She, we know exactly where to go. Amen. And we're going to visit those people. Praise and the we're Lord. going to take them to work. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We That's may wonderful. even have an old-fashioned camp meeting. <laughs> well, nothing wrong with that. That's right. That's right. So I just want to thank God. And I want to thank him for bringing me back home. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, absolutely. I Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just got something real quick. Sure. Um, Go ahead. Testify. At Pastor's message today, you know, she's talking about obeying God and stuff. Found that welcome that one time. And everybody come by and say, boy, we like that welcome that. They can see it when they come in the door. That Christians aren't perfect. We're just forgiven. Mm -hmm. That's a step that we have. Mm -hmm. But also, just like I said, you know, we all fall short. There's no doubt Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. We we, the Spirit of God is going to move in a powerful way in this country. Yes. When it does, they're yes. not going to know what hit them. And these doors, mm -hmm. they're going to be beating down the doors because they know, mm -hmm. God's going to let them know it's getting nearer. Yep. And I think we ought to praise our president yes. for this pre this peace treaty yes. that he's got Thank going on with that Taliban, that yes. troops. Thank and you. our soldiers are going to get to come home 
and the mothers and every all the families that are worried over their fat their their sons and daughters that they won't have to worry about it anymore at least that god's going to move and when he does you better be prepared church because we're going to have we're going to be the ones better be that we're going to turn to to know what we they want to have what we had Mm-hmm. And they want to know why and what did, where did you get it? That's what I always said. Mm-hmm. They want to know. Right. Yeah. What do you have that makes you so happy? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Even when you're going through trials. Because mm-hmm. he says to praise him on the mountain, but also praise him in the valley. That's yeah. right. He did. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord another hand, church. <laughs> That's just like this next song. We're going to do 130 in your praise and worship book. I will trust in you. Yeah. Church, that's who we gotta trust in. We gotta trust in the Lord. And if we trust in God, then He will bring us through. He'll take us through the water, He'll take us through the fire, He'll take us through anything as long as we trust in Him. Hallelujah. But that's the key. And the other key is, and this is the most important, prayer. Pray all the time. That's the key. Praise God. Amen. we got to trust in God and pray. Seek His face, call on His name, and ask whatever we will, and He'll do it. Let go of every single dream. I laid each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering, never changing what you see. I try to witness more. I confess my hands are weary. I need.
Amen. We're going to trust in Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's another one of the keys that he wants us to have. You've got to have faith. You've got to stand on the word no matter what circumstances may come our way. We've got to stand on the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. This is a new song. We done it last Sunday. And we're going to sing it again this Sunday. In the presence of Jehovah. Did you know that you're in the presence of a king? Amen. The presence of Jehovah. Amen. Jehovah Jireh. Our provider. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh 
our God. All right. Oh, it's six. I'm sorry. It's six. Well, Linda, I'm sorry. I thought that man just speak. But it's how great is our God. The splendor of the King
Yeah, that's what I thought. That's right. So now we're going to have the Word of God, and you know it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And the Word of God, what we just sang today, all those songs that we sang, it has a meaning to them. Amen. And how great is our God? He's awesome. Is he a great God? Yes, he is. So what we're going to do with, we're going to see how great he is, because see, when you take the word of God and you place it in, in your mouth, it's in your heart. But see, you can't have any of this until you're born again. But once you have it in your heart, and then it comes out of your mouth, it comes out with power. If you allow it to. And you can't be, you can't just stutter around. You got to get her known. Amen. So let's go to Mark 11. And everyone knows Mark 11. So we're going to look at that for a few minutes. And we're going to start with the 22nd verse. Because I'm not going to read all this. But I want you to see, because this is something that we really do need to, if you're going to get anything in your life, you're going to have to change your words. Your words are going to have to be changed. And the first thing it says here in Mark, 20, in Mark 11, 22, in Jesus, this is Jesus, Jesus answered. So that means he's answering them. It says, and Jesus answered, saying unto them, have faith in God. Well, isn't God the word? In the beginning, the word was with God, the word was God. So right there it says, have faith in God. So do you have faith in God? Yes. Then are you operating in it? See, it's one thing to have faith, but it's another thing to operate in it. And this is one thing that we need to learn a lot more to do, is to start speaking the things that you want to come to pass. And it says, and it says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in thine heart. Now, it tells you that you can say it, and it does it say a whosoever? It says a whosoever. Yeah. It doesn't say just a minister. That's right. It says a whosoever yeah. will. That means anybody can do this that's been born again. Anybody can say to this mountain, be thou removed, and it will be removed. And that mountain could be doubt, fear, unbelief, low self-esteem, Sickness, sin, disease, whatever. Yeah. And you, you don't know. And you know, if you if you don't have this kind of faith to do this, find somebody that has faith, and they'll put their faith with your faith, and your faith will, will explode to a, another Amen. level. Amen. But if you don't see you, you, if you don't have this, you're not going to work walk in it. So you have to walk in this. This is something you have to walk in. And it says you believe in these things which he saith. You got to say them. What do you want to come to pass? You're going to have to say it. Amen. Yeah. And that is over anything in your life. Anything. Whether, it, whether, you're, whether you're at work or whatever you are. You have to say what you want. Does that make God mad? No. Why would he put it in the word of God if it's going to make him mad? And he's the one who said it right there. Jesus is the one who's saying, is it Jesus God? Yeah. yeah. They're one and the same. Jesus just took on another form. He's still God. And he's the one who said, he says, and you shall not doubt in thine heart, but thou shalt believe these things which he saith shall come to pass, and you shall have whatsoever you saith. Now it's you shall have whatsoever. So you, if it says it, then you can have it. It says, therefore I say unto you, the, what things soever you desire. Mm -hmm. Now see, you have to say what you desire. What do you say that you desire? What do you desire? Now I'm not talking about somebody else's husband or somebody else's wife. <laughs> Where I'm on that. But whatsoever do you desire in your, in your life, in your walk? What is it that you desire? Do you desire health? Do you, do, you know the Bible tells you that you can uh, ride up on wings of eagles. You can be restored. Yes. Restored. yes. There yes. can be restoration in yes. your body. Absolutely. Yes. It says you can ride up on wings of eagles. You can do this. You can be renewed as an eagle, the Bible tells you. 
All you have to do is, all you have to do is start speaking. And this is the thing that the church doesn't do. The church don't say what they want to say. They say, well, I think maybe, you know, if God really wants to, uh, <clears throat> he might. If his word says it, he will do it. Because I'm going to give you another uh, scripture here in a minute, but I want to finish reading this, reading this out. And you shall have whatsoever you desire. Now, where was I? Okay, oh, desire. When, when you pray, believe that, that you receive, then them and you shall have them. Now see, it tells you if you believe whatever you desire, you can have it. Because see what? God's a good God, isn't he? Amen. All the time. He's a good God. Yes, he is. Marlene did a good message on he's a good God. Yes, he is. You can have whatsoever you say when you say it, mm -hmm. it'll come to pass. Amen. But you got to say it. It says, and when you stand, I love this part because see, there's a, there's a little flat, a little uh, clause, clause here. And when you stand praying, mm -hmm. forgive. This is the main thing to forgive. To have a heart that is quick to be forgive. You say, well, they don't deserve it. You don't make a bit of difference whether they deserve it or not. It's not about them. It's about you. You're the one who's, who's supposed to be saying to the mountain. And see, this will stop the mountain from being moved. You'll stop that mountain. You'll stop whatever is inside of you that you need to get rid of if you do not forgive. There's got to be a heart of forgiveness. You know, Jesus went to the cross for you and I. And he forgave all of our sins. He took all of our sickness. He did everything for us. Yes. And what did they do? They mocked him. Mm -hmm. They misunderstood him. They couldn't even get the words right with him. But see, he was so kind, and God was so blessed, uh, he blessed us so much that he gave us the written word. Yes. You can go back and read what he said. And it says right there, forgive. If you, <clears throat> if you have anything against any, that your Father, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to think for one minute that just because someone has irritated you, made you mad, trespassed against you, hurt you, that you haven't done it. There's not a person in here that has not hurt somebody sometime right. in their life. That's right. And so if you're willing to forgive, then God will be willing to, and he's able to do whatever you say it. But if you're not willing to forgive, you have just annulled anything in here. Because see, God is a forgiving God. He's a loving God. He's an understanding God. You say, well, I just don't think I can do that. No, you can't. But if you release yourself to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can. The Holy Spirit will. And when you say, I'm going to forgive that person, then you're making a choice. And you're the only one that can make that choice. The Holy Spirit will give you the, he'll give you the, he'll give you the, um, you know, he'll uplift you, he'll say, yes, we can do this, we'll work together, we'll get it done. But it's a choice you have to make. You have to make that choice, and when you make that choice, then you have to stand by it. You can't just forgive one day, and the next day they, they do something make you mad, and you say, well, I'm not gonna forgive them. It's a choice that you do. You make a choice and you say, oh, I will forgive them. I don't care what happens. I'm going to forgive them. See, you're making a statement. You're saying, you're saying that. And you may have to say it with your teeth gritted and you may have to say, and you may have to say a lot of things that you, and you, but you're going to get it out. And you're going to say, I choose to forgive. I choose to let it go. Because, see, it holds you and I back when we don't let go. It holds us back. And when it holds us back, then the Spirit of God can't move like it wants to inside of us. Because we hold it back. It's not God. God don't hold them back from you. You can see that in the Bible, all through the Bible. He's a good God. He's, he doesn't hold anything back. Let's go to Psalms um, 
one, let's go back here to the Psalms. We're going to be in the Psalms a couple minutes here. Well, maybe more than that, but anyhow, we're going to go to Psalm. Well, let's go, well, I just turned to Psalms 91. Psalms 91 is one of the best songs in here that if you want anything, if you have something, anything, you need to get this, I mean, this whole thing, I'm not going to read the whole thing, yes. but <clears throat> I want you to know, um, go to verse 6. It says right there, it says, uh, there's no pestilence, no diseases, that's what it's talking about. <clears throat> it says, now, nor there, nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor the destruction that waste at noonday. In other words, you're not going to be destroyed. Amen. Physically, mentally, you're not going to be destroyed. Amen. When you when you dwell in the secret place, the secret place is the most thing. When you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, and you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, this pestilence cannot come near you. Okay? <laughs> And then it says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. You see, right here, this is God's word. I mean, I'm not making this up. And it says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high my habitation, there shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. If you'll take this, no flu. Right. Amen. No flu. no flu. See, you've got to take this stuff. This stuff is, right. is written for us to take. Amen. No, pe no pestilence, no diseases. That's right. That's it. Why? Because you're allowed to plead the blood of Jesus over you. <laughs> every vessel in your body, every ligament, every tendon, every muscle, every organ in your body needs the blood, the yes. precious blood of Jesus poured over. And when you and I talk about that, when you say, I plead the name, I, in Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Jesus yeah. over my life, over my body, over, the, I plead it over my, uh, my children, my grandchildren, great grandbaby. I plead that blood that cleanses me from all unrighteousness. And heck, I bring the church in too. Amen. I have, you guys all get it. I don't mess with none of you. Just give you all a good blessing with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Because this is what it's for. But see, we need to start putting it over ourselves and over our children. This is the thing right here, so that it doesn't come nigh our dwelling. You say, well, it's out there. Yeah, it is. And what do we say? October comes. Flu will be here pretty soon. I got to get me some Robitussin. I need some Tylenol because I know I'm going to have a headache. And I know I'm going to have a fever. Are you not speaking? Yes. You're speaking these things into yourself. Yes. Yes. This happens all the time. Heck, I've done it for years. Still do. Why? Because you get caught up. Yes. You see it on television. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see that little, that little, what's the name, that little guy, that little green guy? Oh, yes. the yes. Yes. I mean, that guy is the funniest. I just love that commercial because and he always get, and I love it whenever they're going, to, whenever, you know, he, she, she has a cough, and he said, uh, uh, she said, well, it's, you know, she said, I've taken Houston next 12 hours. She said, well, we're going to Australia. <laughs> and she said, well, I've taken it for 12 hours. And, and she takes the hip and knocks him in the commode and out the door. I love it. <laughs> now, I mean, I know that's a commercial, but you know, to think, we should be able to do that. We should be able to knock the Satan out of our way. Yes, yes absolutely. I mean, we've got more power than you should have. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. You know? Yes. Oh, you guys are good this morning. But this, this last verse, I love this last verse, 16th verse. It says, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Yes. Amen. Well, salvation means wholeness, soundness, deliverance. That's what salvation means. So if you're, you need to be whole, spirit, soul, body, socially, and financially, you need to be whole. You need your mind to be renewed. All this up here, because up here in the 14th, it's because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. That's his word. And I will, and I will set him on high because he knows my name. Do you know Jesus' name? Amen. 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 Then see, if you know his name, he can deliver you. Amen. He has a desire to live the living. You know, I want to tell you something. 107. 
We're going to get finished with this in a few minutes here. 107. And it's a song. We're still in Psalms. 107. And um, starting with the 19th verse. It says, Then they cried unto the Lord, unto, unto the Lord in their trouble. We all have trouble, right? Yeah. We, all have, we all have a lot of, we have problems. I mean, you're in this world, you're going to have problems. The Bible tells you that. It says, Then they cried unto the Lord in their, in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. And look what he said. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. That is God's word. Yes, amen. That's what he said I'll do for you. It said, I, he said, he sent his word, and Jesus he sent. And you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. He said, and he sent his word and healed them. Jesus is the healer. Yes, he is. And he also is your, our deliverer. So when you, when you get to looking at the word of God, you say to yourself, you say, self, this is not bad. This is pretty good stuff. Right. Now let's go to Psalms 1. Let's go back to Psalms 103. This is a couple verses I want to, because I want you, I want you to get a hold of this healing, deliverance, whatever you need in your life. If you need a mountain move, get a hold of this. Get this, get the mountain out of our way. And Psalms 103 says, "Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions. Bless the Lord, and all that's within me. What's within you? Your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your spleen, your liver." All of that needs to be, you need to bless the Lord with the, all of your interests, all of the, your insides, all of the, all, every part of your being needs to bless the Lord. Amen. And it says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and don't forget the benefits. A benefit is healing. It's what you receive. If someone gives you a benefit, they give you money, you've received the benefit. Amen. Well, people at work, do you not receive benefits? You receive health care, you receive all this for pay or whatever. It's a benefit. Well, he's given us a benefit right here. And he says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Don't forget. Have you ever known of anybody with a steel trap mind? I know several of them. And I think they were all Myers's. Is the ones that I know. Well, that's the one. That's the, I, have, I have somebody who's green with me there. But, <laughs> so you know, Jim knows that. He says, who? It says, who forgives all my iniquities? See, there's, he forgives you all of your sins. There's not a sin that God cannot and will not forgive except a sin that you will not ask him to. You have to ask him to forgive you of your sins. And it says, who redeems thy life? It says, who forgives all of me, see? Who forgives all thy iniquity and who healeth all thy diseases? Right there's another one, healing of thy diseases. Amen. He said he forgives you of your sins and then he heals you. Yes. Who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Now there are some people that do not have loving kindness and tender mercy. <laughs> There's some other churches that don't have it too. Oh. <laughs> but anyhow, we forgive. We have a forgiving heart. <laughs> that was just hauled off the press. <laughs> thought about that till just now. Uh, but anyhow, it, it, that's what it says. Loving kindness and, and tender mercy. And who satisfies thy mouth with good things. Now here is the satisfying of your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. And you know anybody who's ever studied the eagles, they fly up to the top, they knock off their beaks, they take out all their, their feathers, they, they don't fly, they don't do anything until all of this regrows. They, it regrows again. That's the renewing. Mm -hmm. Well, you have the Word of God, but we can be renewed every day. Amen. Now, I have one more message. I have one more. Well, in Exodus, it says he did, but there's one more that I wanted to uh, bring to you, and it's Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah, I want to, because I want to show you something, all these scriptures I've given you, this one right here is Jeremiah 1, 12. And he's talking to Jeremiah in, in, the, in, this, in these chapters. 
And he and then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten, I want you to notice hasten, to hasten my word to perform it. In other words, he'll hasten his word to perform it. He'll perform his word, and he'll be fast at it. Now, a lot of times I thought to myself, boy, I'll tell you one thing, Lord, you are very slow. <laughs> I mean, I've even said, you are really slow in moving. But see, right here, it goes right against what I said, because he's talking to Jeremiah and going down to read it. He says, thus, will, thus has well said, seen, for I will hasten. I'm going to hasten to do it. His speed and my speed are two different speeds. I'm, I'm, I want it done now, quickly. But see, he said, I hasten. I hear you. I honor you. I will do what you've asked me to do. I'll send my word. I'll heal you. I'll deliver you. I'll do that for you. But are we, but are we, willing, are we really willing, willing to allow him to... To get it, gotta get it right. And we are we willing to allow him to go ahead and do it, or do we we do we just go ahead and say that was my candy? Oh. <laughs> Got candy canes. <laughs> just slew them out of the bottle. But anyhow, are we willing to allow him to do this, or are we are we just gonna say, well, now that's what the word says, but I just don't know it's gonna work for me. If he put it in the Word of God, it'll work for you if you put it to work. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you have a forgiving spirit and you have a, a spirit that will receive, if you will have a, a heart to receive, then it will go. It will go for you, not against you. Mm -hmm. It'll work for you. But if you don't, it's not going to. Right. So we're going to get a song. They're going to cut me off, but. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you for watching Zor House of Prayer's live broadcast. We stream live every Sunday morning and would like to invite you to come out and be in service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. and morning worship begins at 11 a.m. We are located three and a half miles past the Morgantown Mall on 19 South. Take a right onto Sugar Grove Road for a mile and the church sits on the right with a sign at the foot of the hill. Thank you and God bless.